Father God, we come before your throne of grace behind the veil. We recognize that the judgment is going on. We pray that as we on earth prepare to meet you in peace, we pray that you will guide us and lead us into all wisdom. You said, if any man lack wisdom, ask of God. So we listen to the secrets of the kingdom from the prophets. We thank you for the willingness of our hearts to be here at this setting, for we receive the love of the truth. We want to know the truth, and we thank you for what you have done, is doing, and will do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. All right, from, a, from our morning session, there could have been some questions. Anyone had any, any questions that we can briefly ask as we move along? Okay. If not, we're going to continue with the slides. We have two sets of slides. We want to go through these slides. And then we're going to deal with, um, we want to clear this up so that going forward, Okay. There we go. All right. All right. We'll we, we, we deal with the other slides if we get to it. Okay. So here's what it says. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Okay. We want to get ready for what? What do we want to get ready for? That's true. But what do we want to get ready for? That's true. The end of the world is seven events should be preparing for what is to burst upon the world as an overwhelming surprise. The reason why it's going to burst upon them, they don't think this world is going to come to an end, and so they're trying to save it by climate change. But you and I know it's not climate change, it's kingdom change. Amen. Amen. All the signs that they are talking about in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21 are signs of Jesus coming, which we know is kingdom change, okay? But the devil's going to exercise his power to try to lean things his way, okay? The devil is, is the architect, and, and he's going to make a real mess of things. And I always wonder why we got to come late. Seems like we should come early, but the way the prophecy is, we're going to come late. And the reason being is our extremity is God's opportunity. God don't come when we can do it ourselves. But when we really need help, when God step in, we will see his intervention. And we know that it is God taking the reins in his hand. When you think about it, this thing question, I don't care. You hear some people say, we're going to finish the work. They can't finish the work because God has appointed a day in which he will finish the work. They don't know the day. You heard that, right? Yes. Don't fall for that. No human being is going to finish the work. Let's give them the benefit of the doubt and say they just want to help God by doing their part. That Yeah, they can do it, but they're not going to finish the work. They're not going to finish the work until God says so because he has appointed a day when the end will come. Amen? Amen. Okay. So it says, the message of present truth. We are Seventh-day Adventists, and the whole Bible is truth. But God has raised us up particularly to give the last, final, warning message to planet Earth. And I know how you feel. I feel the same way. Can these dry bones live? I don't see how we in the condition that we're in now, going to gonna do anything. But the story today was beautiful. Nineveh was a big city. And somehow, without internet, smartphones, and all that, the whole city got the message, right? God's going to work the same way. In fact, the prophet says, it won't be by argument in these last days, but by deep moving of the Holy Ghost. God is going to move by the Holy Ghost. So, and we are called to get present truth. We're not going to talk about the flood. We can talk about the flood for 50 years and won't prepare people for what is right in front of them. We are dealing with the beast, his image, his mark, his name, and his number. That's what we're dealing with. There's two things you're going to be forced to worship which is the beast and his image, 
but between the beast and his image, who is the worst enemy? Who's the worst enemy according to the Bible in Revelation 13? Who is it? Who is it? Who is the worst, I said, so that means you got to choose. You can't, you can't do the generic both. Who is the worst? Revelation 13. It is the image of the beast. And he causes all to receive a mark that no man might buy or sell save he. Remember, the lamb-like beast is not the enemy. Okay, the lamb-like beast is a good guy, but it will eventually speak as a dragon. But not because it wants to, it's because a religious element gets involved with the lamb-like beast. And that's where the lamb-like beast becomes a dragon. You follow that? Okay, so let's look at this. We were called to give the present truth. It says, the message of present truth is to what? Prepare a what? A people for the coming of the Lord. Let us understand this. In other words, we are to understand what the final moves will be. Why? Why must we understand this? So we won't be deceived, that's true, but why else must we understand that? Look at it like this. If I told you there was a dust storm coming, and I told you there was a lightning storm coming, would you prepare the same for both? No. no. So you got to know tomorrow's news to know what to prepare for, right? So if you know this, you know how to prepare the people for the coming of the Lord because this must take place first. That's what we read in our text today, right? Everybody was looking for what we always say, Jesus is coming. But Paul said, that day shall not come except we have a what? People don't go to church no more. Everybody's home Zooming. Everybody's doing all kinds of stuff. They've forsaken the assembling of ourselves together as a manner of some is. You can't fellowship on Zoom. You can try, but it ain't nothing like, you know, being here and fellowship and touching and, hey, brother, sister, whatever. Zoom is okay, but it ain't, it ain't fellowship for sure. And the devil know that if he can get you to keep zooming, you'll be ever learning, but never able to come to a knowledge of the truth. Because you got to rub shoulders with brothers and sisters in the church. And some people are going to rub you soft, and some people are going to rub you hard. You don't get that rub on Zoom. Okay? Okay. So it says, let us understand this. We are to prepare for the coming of the Lord, and we need to understand. So we, and to prepare for the Lord, the best text I can think of in the Bible says, I don't know what we shall be like, but when he appears, what's the rest of it? We shall be just like him. Now that's our goal. Don't ever lose sight of that. Your goal is not to know when the Sunday law is going to come, or when you do this and when you, no, your goal is to be Christ-like. And if you're Christ-like, all the other stuff will fall into place. Okay? Okay, it says, uh, let those placed in responsible position come into what? Such unity. Such unity that the work shall go forward Solid. solidly. We should all speak the same thing, have the same mind, the same judgment. And you and I better start learning how to work together. And, you know, we got, because at the end of the day, every earthly support is going to be withdrawn. All you're going to have is your brothers and sisters 
fellow brothers and sisters. So we got to learn to work together uniformly and solidly. Okay, I love these quotations because it sets the standard. We need to strive for unity up here and to do things right. That's what we need to be looking for. Uh, the placing of men in position of responsibility in various conferences does not make them, uh-oh, what does it say? Gods. And see, the devil is trying to get people to trust on people. And sometimes we place people as gods. But they're not God. They're just in the position of responsibility, just like some of us. Okay? So don't, don't put them as God. You know? And when you read the spirit, I don't want to, no, I ain't, I'm, I'm not going to say nothing about that because I don't want to create no issues. No one has sufficient wisdom to what? To act without counsel. Men need to counsel with their hallelujah. Brethren, okay? To counsel together, to pray together, and to plan together for the advancement of the work. In the multitudes of counselors, there is safety. You know, we're all in here together. Don't think you by yourself. You know, that's what the world said. We all in this together. That's no, I ain't in there with y'all. That's right, no, we ain't. You know, they try to say, I'm out there. I tell them all the time. Or they say, the American people want this. I said, nobody asked me anything. No. But we, as God's children, we have the same Lord, and we should learn to press together. You know, we got to learn it now. Okay. All right, here we go. Let laborers what? Kneel down together and pray to God, asking what? Him to direct their course. There has been a great lack with us on this point. What point? Kneeling down together and praying to God. There's a great lack. We have trusted too much to man devising. We cannot afford to do this. Perilous times are upon us, and we must come to the place where we know that the Lord lives and what? And rule, and that he dwells in the heart of the children of men. We must have confidence in God. What's the reference? Uh, fundamentals of Christian, Fundamentals of Education 530.2. I remember it, even though I, I, I thought I had put that down far enough, but I didn't. Jesus is coming to the cities, and uh, we need to be preparing to not only move into the country, but being prepared to go back into the cities. It says, shall not the cities be worked? Yes, not by God's people living in them, but them visiting the city and telling them what is to come to pass. You know what the prophets said? Oh, that God's people will understand the destruction of thousands of cities that are given over to idolatry. Okay. God, I always say this, God is not going to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. You know that, right? So if you don't apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah, he's not going to apologize to Philadelphia, he's not going to apologize to Camden, Phoenix, Albuquerque, wherever, Spain, London. He's not going to apologize. We're talking about the whole world. And when the whole world cities start getting destroyed, oh, people are going to be looking for answers. When fire and brimstone that rain on Sodom and Gomorrah rain on some of these cities, God says Adventists should not go into these cities and rebuild, trying to make a home for themselves. Can you imagine a council like that? I, I, every time I read that or think about that, I said, boy, we must be brain dead. 
to think that here I see here that Philadelphia got burned up by fire and brimstones, and you think I'm going to go and build a house in that city that just got torched? What kind of brain we have that God has to write a council like that? Tell us, don't go, don't go build in that city. Are we that brain dead? That's the deceitfulness of sin. God knew it was warranted. He had to give that counsel because some smart, wise Adventist could say, oh, I'm going to build a house for anybody else. I can make a lot of profit in here. You know how people are speculating. They want to get in there and make some moves or whatever. Okay, let the watchman now lift up their voice and give the message which is what? Present true for this time. Let us show the people where we are in prophetic history and seek to arouse the spirit of true what? Protestantism. Awakening the world to a sense of the value of the privileges of religious liberty so long enjoyed. Do you know, and you should know, that religious liberty will come to an end. You should know that, right? Every principle of our Constitution is going to be repudiated. All your Bill of Rights and all that stuff is going. And so when you and I are suffer abuse and we don't get the rights and the judgment, what are we to say? Nothing. Nothing. But what are we to say right now? Everything. We're supposed to say everything. We are to do everything in our power to prevent this nation from passing to that point. Because when they get to that point, then you just, ain't nothing you can say. I mean, you can say, you're gonna, we're going to say anyway, but God already told us they're not going to listen. The judges are not going to listen to us because they know we're right. That's what she says, they're not going to listen. But nevertheless, we ought to tell them why. Because they have a judgment coming up too. And they can't go and say, Lord, nobody told me. Uh -uh. They won't be ignorant. They're going to hear the message. This gospel of the king shall be preached to all the world for witness. Awaken the world to a sense of the value of the privilege of religious liberty so long uh, enjoyed. Study Revelation in connection with Daniel, for the history will be what? Repeated. Repeated. We, with all our religious advantages, ought to know far more today. Angels desire to look into the truth that are revealed to the people who with contrite hearts are searching the word of God and praying, praise God, for greater lengths and breadths and depths and heights of the knowledge which he alone can give. <laughs> and I tell you, I, 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 I would tell you, I tell my wife all the time, the Bible says to steady, to show thyself approved. Okay? What does that mean? Steady for yourself. Why? If you continue to rely, not saying you shouldn't, but a lot of people, I know a lot of people, they rely on YouTube and Instagram and this. They're letting someone else do their studying, right? But when you read the book, you will find out there's a lot of meat that they are leaving out. A lot of meat they're leaving out. And if you continue to rely upon that, you will be what the Bible calls those people who are ever studying and learning. But they still don't know anything. They're getting, all, getting a lot of knowledge, but they don't know anything. You got to study for yourself because the Bible is your lamp. If you don't study for yourself, you won't get oil with your lamp, and that's the Holy Spirit. As you read this, the Holy Spirit can endow your mind with thought. Okay? So that's, that's very, very important. Unequal forces, waiting. Those who eat the flesh and drink the blood of the Son of God will bring from the books of Revelation and Daniel truth that is inspired by the what? Holy Spirit. 
they will start into action forces that cannot be repressed. The lips of children will be open to proclaim the mysteries that have been hidden from the minds of men. Are you ready for this? You want, or what are you going to tell the kids? Y'all be quiet. Y'all be quiet. Y'all know what you're talking about. When God goes to work, he's going to show you that children are going to take the stage. And you will know by their fruits, by their message, that this prophecy is being fulfilled. God must take the reins into his hand because sometimes we take, we, you know, we can't get started. Is that me or what am I doing? Okay. We are standing on the threshold of great and solemn events. Okay, for history will be repeated. Many of those whom the Lord has called to do a work for him in the ministry are loaded down with an accumulation of what? Books. Books. If ministers would link their soul with the divine teacher and search the scriptures, hungering and thirsting for knowledge which comes direct from the inexhaustible fountain, they would be greatly blessed. God says most people who have a lot of reference books, they are confused. You know, because, you know, as you look at all the different books that the writers put out, they say, well, one school of thought is this. One school of thought is this. One school of thought is this. But what's the problem? They never tell you which thought is right. You need to know which one is right. Amen. Steady revelation, those who depend wholly, oh, we don't know what that word means, wholly upon God, do not need expensive libraries in order to gain an insight into the scripture. Many expensive books are not essential, and those who study these books to the neglect of the Bible are in danger of becoming confused in their what? Ideas. Is it not a fact that those who possess the most aids in the way of theological work are the least prepared to hold forth to others the word of life? Hello? <laughs> God has given us an aid, his holy word, and this is entirely safe. It may, depend, it may be dependent on the shepherd of the flock who reads and studies the one trustworthy book and pray for information from it, we'll find the heavenly messengers right at hand, ready to empty from themselves the golden oil. I love that. That's beautiful, right? The words we utter today in the ears of the people, the work we are doing, the spirit of the message we are bearing will be a savior of life unto life or of death unto death. My brethren, do you realize that your own salvation uh, as well should have been in there. I left that out. See, when you know it, you, somehow it didn't get in there. As well as the destiny of other souls depending upon the preparation you now make for the trial before us. Have we forgotten Satan's plans for SCA now living in cities and villages? Listen, our principal concern is to silence this set of Sabbath keepers. The devil, he wants to shut us up. It says we must excite popular indignation against them. We will enlist great men, worldly wise, worldly wise men upon our sides and induce those in authority to carry out our purpose. Who's talking here? Satan. Satan is talking. This is his plan. Ellen White is hearing it and she's writing down. Then, then the Sabbath, which means Sunday, which I have set up shall be enforced by laws the most what? Anybody know what superlative English is? Can Satan bring the most severe? Sure. He self up the sum. He got 6,000 years ahead of us. He knows what they did during the Inquisition, during the Dark Ages, and on and on all through. He knows everything plus what he knows from heaven. And that's why if we don't have genuine faith, 
when these laws are the most severe, it's going to hurt ourselves. You, you, you know what we're going to do, right? Well, I, I, you, know, you know us. That self, he's going to push that self button. I know for me he's going to push it. Because when you say I can't do something, oh, I, I'm, 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 I'm going to do it. And you all probably have the same uh, mentality, amen? But it's going to be the most severe. And what? Oh, that's going to be real hard for Christians. We, we, we not exact people. Exacting. When I used to raise my, my uh, nieces and nephew, I have to say I was exacting. Didn't I tell you to sit there? I don't care if your mother is coming through the door. You sit there until I tell you to move. That's what my sister did to me. And that's what I did to my great, my nieces and nephew. My sister, she was exacting. And don't you dare move. You, y'all, y'all, some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Old folks, they were exacting. There was zero tolerance. Okay. Those who disregard them, what, what are you disregarding? The Sunday law. Those who disregard them shall be driven out from the cities and villages and made to suffer hunger and privation. So, like we always say, God's people are gone from the cities one way or the other. You can go voluntary and do it the way God said it, or you can wait for the National Sunday Law, and the devil's going to do what? What's he going to do? How's he going to get you out of the city? Why are we guessing? It says driven out. Then he's going to drive you out. How's he going to drive you out? Very simple. If you're trying to be a Christian, everybody around you is a devil. Oh, you're going to leave. You're going to leave. They don't want you around them, and you don't want to be around them. So don't wait. Everybody's going one way or the other. You're going. You can go voluntarily, or you can drag your heels and wait until he drives you out. And when he drives you out, you ain't got nothing to eat. And you have privation. People don't know what privation is. You know, where I come from, it's starting to get a little chilly. And Jesus, in his love, he tells saints to pray this prayer. And I don't know too many Christians who pray it. He says, pray that your flight be not in the winter time, nor on the Sabbath day. <laughs> I'm not going to ask how many Christians pray that prayer. They don't even know it. They probably never even heard it, some Christians. You better pray. I come from New Jersey, and it gets cold. And so, so some out here, you know, it don't get as cold, but I pray that prayer. That I don't know, Lord, when I got to go, I pray it won't be in the wintertime, nor on the Sabbath day. Yeah. Yeah. So we got some praying to do, right? That's right. Yeah. Well, the only problem is, when the Sunday law come out, you won't be in Phoenix. Because he said he's going to drive you out of Phoenix. <laughs> so where you at might be warm now, but when that Sunday law come out, if you're in a warm spot in the city, hello, you're going to be driven out. And when it's raining, you ain't got no shelter. It's cold, you're free. You know, I, I run to a lot of say, oh, it's cold. It ain't cold yet. It's just chilly. It ain't cold yet. If you're cold now, you better be praying your flight don't be in the wintertime. 
because it's, it's, it's going to be rough on you. Yeah. And then the Bible says, and woe to those who are with what? Child. With child. You got your little children out there, you know, and so forth and so forth. It's going to be rough. And they're going to have to suffer with you because you didn't prepare for what was coming. Phew. Okay. Then the Sunday Sabbath, which I have set up, shall be enforced by laws the most severe and exacting. Those who disregard them should... Oh, I, I covered that. Okay. Uh, this one is about the Sabbath. Brothers and sisters, if we plan to receive the seal of the living God, we must learn to obey God and keep his seal, which is the Sabbath. This applies for men and women. You see what God says? I don't, you know, this is about my fourth time, about fourth time explaining this. You're not going to get the seal of God if you don't respect God. That's, that sounds reasonable? Or oh, here's what the quote says. It is a dishonor to the Sabbath, one, and to God, two, and to his church or house, three, for those who profess that the Sabbath is the holy of the Lord and honorable to wear the same clothing upon the Sabbath that they have worn through the week. Okay. In other words, without making it a long, drawn-out process, you show the type of God that you are worshiping when you respect his day, you respect God, you do what he says, not what you want, and you res respect the assembly of the saints. Babylon don't do that. They come any old kind of way. Okay? But unfortunately, when you get to heaven, you're going to get a long white robe. Oh, I, I'm always touching it. Did I go back or forward? Yeah. Um, you're going to get a, a white robe. And believe it or not, you're going to have to wear that in heaven. And there won't be nobody in heaven who don't like what God said they should wear. You understand what I'm saying? So we must learn to let God be L-O-R-D. What's that, what that mean? Lord, Lord what that mean? He tells you what you should and should not do. And all you got to do is get used to dying. Just, just do it. When some try to take control, don't let it, don't let it happen. Because you know that the God that you serve continually wants only the best for you and he won't steer you wrong. Amen. Ladies, put on your best. Hello? I don't know what's the best in your robe, but I know you got a long robe. Yeah, they got a long wardrobe on. I thought my little two shoes in the closet was something. <laughs> you open the lady's side of the closet. Woo! Y'all know what I'm talking about. I don't know why they're going to have 15, 20 pairs of shoes <laughs> to buy two. Could it be they want to keep up with the fashion of the world? Could it be? I think so. Come out from the world. Be ye separate, God says. Touch not to unclean. We got to give that up. Those, those other 12 pairs of shoes, you could have... You could, uh, Send that money over to, uh, over to Haiti or someplace to help the gospel over there. That's the something now that God requires of his people. We are to deny ourselves. So that's why when 144 is developed, it probably will be very few people in the United States who's, who's a member of the 144,000. 
Huh? Yeah, because they've been babies and wasted so much. And those people over there, they go out to their vehicle if it don't start. They'll walk 20 miles to church. You think that happened in America? That ain't going to happen. It won't happen. Okay. So, let's go forward real quick. The cities are to be worked from outposts, says the messenger of God. Shall not the cities be warned? Yes. Not by God's people living in them, but by their what? Visiting them to warn them. Warn them of what is coming upon the earth. We are to warn them. The flood will come. The earthquake will come. I heard this week we had the tornado. The next day we had what? The earthquake, okay, in Indonesia. The next day we had the what? We had the uh, tsunami or monsoon in the Philippines. And then what was the, the, the last one? That was like that whole week. I said, what? what is right behind one another? And that's why fellowship together works for God's people. You're going to hear something that I won't hear, and I'm going to hear something that you won't hear, because the devil don't want us to hear that. So, because he wants us to just stay right where we are so that we can be what? Weighed in the balances. That's why. He wants us to stay right where we was last week. Okay, combine medical missionary work with the proclamation of the third angel's message. Make regular, organized efforts to lift the church members out of the what? I didn't say that now. The prophet said that. Out of the dead level in which they have been for what? Years. Years. That's terrible. A new element must be brought into the work. We've been dead for years, and the church has worldwide been dead for years. Is that a true testimony? That's a true testimony. Yeah, we just can't see the value. It's in the wrong book. You can't read it. Go back. What's, what's the reference value? What? Uh, testimonies. Volume 6, page 267, and Councils to Medical Evangelist 17.3. CME. The world must have an antidote for sin. As the medical missionary work intelligent to relieve the suffering and save life, hearts are soft, and those who are helped are filled with gratitude. As the medical missionary work upon the body, God will work upon the heart. That's manuscript 58, 1901. As a means of overcoming what? Prejudice and gaining access to minds. Medical missionary work must be done not in one or two places, but in what? Many places where the truth has not yet been proclaimed. If the people see that we are intelligent with regards to health, they will be more ready to believe that we are sound in what? Bible doctrine. This work will break down prejudice as nothing else can. You can point to the uplifted Savior and tell the love of the great physician who alone has power to restore and says, you know that's Exodus 15, 26, right? You got to do that which is right in God's sight. And he'll hear your prayer, keep his commandments and statutes. And he will put none of those diseases upon you. For no matter what you do or don't do, if you get healed, it is the Lord that heals you. So you can give credit wherever you want. When the cities don't work as God would have them, the results will be the setting and operation of a mighty movement such as we have not yet witnessed. Medical ministry. It is the Lord's purpose that his method of healing without drugs shall be brought into prominence in every large city through our medical institution. But that ain't happening. <laughs> God invests with holy dignity those who go forth in his power to what? Heal the sick, not treat, not manage, none of that. 
Soon there will be no work done in ministerial lines except medical missionary. The truth of this time, the third message is to be proclaimed with a loud voice as we approach the great final test. Then the prophet says, this test, which test? The national Sunday law and worldwide Sunday law must come to the churches in connection with the true medical missionary work. And we're seeing that. Right now, we have the jab. And it's testing Adventists. It's coming, but it's not coming by itself. It's coming in connection with the mark of the beast. And so when you read Revelation 13, it says he calls us all to receive a mark. That mark is not the mark of the beast. That mark is what I have coined the mark of compliance. They must know that you have complied. Mm. This jab is going to connect with the Sunday law. Mm. And they're going to know whether you have complied because you're going to need a passport. That's right. You're going to need something that you have got the jab or you can't go in this restaurant or you can't go into this supermarket or you can't go to school or you can't get gas. You know where it's going. Y'all know where it's going. And also last week, Congress passed a law that for a database. Last week, Congress passed a law for money and support of a database. So a vaccine database is now written in the law. That's right. And you know why they need the database? Because the prophecy, the most vivid presentation will not reach the magnitude of the deal. If you talk to Larry Gibson, Larry Gibson wasn't vaccinated, then they're going to quarantine you too. It's, gonna just, it's just going to metastasize all over society. They're going to track you down. Like I was telling Brother Aaron today, I don't send nothing to the cloud. <laughs> because Rome controls everything, right. and she's funneling. You can't believe them when they say, oh, we don't share your privacy. They're all liars. Right. They don't keep the commandments of God. And so you got to do what Jesus said. Jesus says what? Trust no man. Because no you're going to find they're going to betray you. So we're going to see there's going to be sick ones. In fact, they probably won't even have enough staff to man the hospitals, because I love it. The health workers, the policemen, they are people who are not religious. They are refusing to take the jab. You know why? For right now, they have a right. It is still America. They still have freedom of conscience, and they're not going to give up their conscience to the beast or his image, or they're not going to receive his mark. They're not going to do it. And so I thank God for the 11 hour workers are putting on their uniform. They're getting ready to come in. And their zeal is going to far exceed ours. So you better get ready. You can stay there and be all stiff and can't say hallelujah, praise the Lord, thank you, Jesus, all you want. They're going to go right on past you. Go straight to the kingdom. So you better get ready. And when the people from Nineveh come in, say, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. But they're coming in. And, 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 and I won't have to say walls and ceilings, say amen. Or they're going to be, they're going to be shouting amen. That's right. So you better get in practice. Amen. There will be sick ones, plenty of them that will need what? Help. Help. So because of the need, because, uh, but for their own sake, and this is what God is telling us, for your own sake, they should, we should, while we have what? Opportunity. Opportunity become, here's the key word. What's that word? Intelligent, Intelligent in regard to disease. What's disease? What's God's definition of disease? Is it? There it is. Disease is an effort of nature to right wrong conditions in the system brought about through a transgressions of the law of God. 
In other words, God don't want you to be diseased, but he knew that we would violate his law. So God's solution is that disease is uncomfortable condition that is trying to change the climate of your blood and to right wrong conditions that you created by not following the laws of health. Did that come out halfway decent? But the devil says, no, disease is bad. And it is, but he says, stop it. So when you stop it, the waste that was coming out now stays in. And so when it stays in, it finally goes to the next uh, eliminated organ, which is the lung. So now you can barely breathe. So they rush you to the hospital and say, oh, you got pneumonia. So then they give you some more drugs and stop the cleansing. You die in your waste. That's what happened. All those areas. Coughing is good. Amen? God designed it away. When something gets in the a cough. Take a deep breath when you're outside. <laughs> Amen? Okay, for our own sake, we should, while we have opportunity, become intelligent in regards to disease. What causes it is prevention and treatment, right? And management, right? And supervision, right? You know, in the medical world, they don't use that word. They sure don't. They can't, they don't believe, oh, there's no cure for that. You have to live with it for the rest of your life. But anyway. Right. Yeah. This uh, drugs and like in the 1950s, um, the people do a study on the organic chemistry. That's where we get all these these drug products from. Right. The chlorine petroleum chemistry. Where is that black sludge from the um, oil field? Well, when they refine that, they make plastic. They make right. drugs. They make all kinds of stuff with that. And that's why there's that's why they push those drugs so much. Yeah. It's, it's, it's Oh, yeah, it's more profitable to treat you than to cure you. And so we're going to be doing that, even when probation closed. People are going to be sick all around us. Sick and dying is going to be all around us, and we are obligated to help them. By the use of poisonous drugs, many bring upon themselves lifelong illness, and many lives are lost that might be saved by the use of natural methods of healing. Restorative power in nature, the only hope. Y'all know what that word is, right? That's the English word, only. The only hope of better things is in the education of the people in right principles. Teach the people that restores their power is not in drugs, but in nature. Oh, battery running low. Um, okay. And not in nature. So there's the, there's the terminology. Disease is an effort of nature to free the system. Y'all can control it from here. Just Oh, you got it plugged in? Okay. To free the system from conditions that result in a violation of the laws of health. Okay. So that's God's definition of disease. The disease is on God's payroll. So I know it's a little, you know. All right. So when Jesus comes, we want to be ready. Behold, he comes with clouds, and every eye shall see him. Amen? All right. Last little slide, and we're done. This one's real, this is a real short one. Okay. This one is here, there. This is Revelation 13 and 17, okay? Um, okay. 
like I always says, when you read the book of Revelation 13, stop, don't stop completely, but stop beating up the beast. Because Rome, when you deal with Rome, you deal with two phases. Pagan Rome and papal Rome is never separated. Amen? Amen. Why? Because in Daniel 7, when Daniel saw the terrible beast, a little horn came up and plucked up what? Three by the roots. So if the beast is destroyed, what happens to the little horn? It's destroyed too, because the beast is a part of the terrible beast. So when you see the papacy, you are seeing pagan Rome. Okay? There is no such thing as church and state biblically. God does nothing with Caesar. Okay? Because Jesus says what? Render unto Caesar what is Caesar, unto God. Now this is very important to understand this. So when you teach people about Revelation 13, you need to get these definitions down. Babylon is what you find in Revelation uh, 17. And upon her head was a name written, what? Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of her daughters, daughters which were also harlots. So you got a family of harlots. You got mom and daughter. Mom is the Catholic Church, and the daughters are the apostate Protestant churches. Protestant churches used to be the woman of Revelation 12. But when she rejected the first angel's message in the summer of 1844, she fell, and you find her in Revelation 17 on the terrible beast. Many Seventh-day Adventists teach that the woman of Revelation 12 is the Seventh-day Adventist church, which is incorrect. Initially, that woman represents the church of the Jewish nation because it had the 12 stars, okay? But as it goes all the way through time to Revelation 12, 17, Satan is wroth with the woman, but he makes war with us, who is the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus. Remember, that woman fell when she rejected the first angel's message. You can read that in the early writings, the first angel's message, second angel's message. So that's Babylon. Babylon is all the apostate powers, all those who will not obey God's law, they can't stand it. The, the human heart is at enmity against God's law. That's the pa that's a papacy, apostate Protestantism, and spiritualism. Spiritualism is every person who have not accepted Jesus Christ. Jesus says you can't serve two masses. You're either on my side or you're on the devil's side. And if you're on the devil's side, you are controlled by demons. And the devil's not going to disturb you if you just ignore one thing that God says, you are on the devil's side. You get that? Okay. Apostate Protestantism. This here. Apostate Protestantism. And that is spiritualism. You're controlled by demons. Okay? The first beast of Revelation 13, the first beast is not a leopard beast, but a leopard-like beast. Okay? And this leopard-like beast is described from Revelation 13, 1 to 10. The leopard-like beast is the papacy, not the Catholic Church, the papacy. That's the branch of the Catholic Church led by the uh, popes, and they're the one who is the heart of the beast, okay? So you have another creature, which is lamb-like. This beast is the second beast, 
which goes from Revelation 11 to 18, and that land-like beast represents the United States. Now, if you go back to, to this first beast, Revelation uh, 13, 8, it says, all that dwell upon the earth shall worship the papacy. If you look in your Bible, except those whose names are written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. In other words, I don't care what church you go, I don't care where you work, I don't know who you are. If you're on planet Earth and you don't, your name is not maintained in the book of life, you are going to worship the papacy. Did you get that? You're either going to worship the papacy or you're going to worship Jesus. Okay? So there you have the two beasts of Revelation 13. The image, there's two images. There's an image to, and there's an image of. And the Bible says, He bringeth fire down from heaven and deceiveth them that dwell upon the earth. And then it says, Say unto them that dwell upon the earth that they should, this is a suggestion, they should make an image to the beast. They're suggesting the union of church and state. Okay? When, when this occurred, when church and state come together, then you have an image of the beast. That's when the major United States apostate Protestant churches control the lamb-like beast. The lamb-like beast is the United States of America. The churches are going to take over the government. And the reason why that's going to happen when fire come down from heaven, the civil government have no understanding of what's happening. So what do you think they're going to do? They're going to call the churches together. They're going to call the religious people and say, what is happening here? They are the false prophets. And the prof prophets are going to say, we are having these tornadoes and these climate change and all these other things because we are not keeping the Lord's day the way God says. Well, you and I know that the Lord's day don't exist other than as a seventh-day Sabbath. So the false prophets are going to tell the lie. You and I got to come behind them and clean up the error. It's better that we tell them before, but we're not out there. We tell them before so that when the false prophets come, we already told them what's going to happen, and the people have a better balance of accepting truth and error. Yeah, Brother Larry. Go ahead. In 2005, uh, when Katrina hit, the mayor of Katrina at that time, he stated that God is upset with us because we were not keeping the Lord. That's right. And where did they get that inspiration from? The devil. The devil is determined to make laws to exterminate those who keep the commandments of God. Okay? So, he calls us all to receive a mark. That's the mark of compliance. Okay? That's mandated health, vaccines, and etc. For the public good, they're going to suggest you keep your distance, you know, I, I guess they talked to the virus, and the virus said, no, I can only go six feet. <laughs> you know, that's the ridiculous, you know, that's Daniel 12, 10. The wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. They just do dumb stuff, you know. Uh, uh, or or, or they, they, they be in the restaurant, they got their masks on, Oh, I got to eat now, mass uh, virus, take a break. I got to eat over here. Or oh, I got to take a smoke, mm -hmm. you know, or whatever. I was in a store, and you can't try on the clothes, but the sign says you can buy it, take it home, if you don't fit, then you can bring it back and get a prayer. Well, if I'm doing all that, I might as well try it. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they, 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 they're unreasonable. You know, they just don't understand. You know, it, it's comical. They're so scared of the virus, but there's certain times they, they can tell the virus take a break and they can take the mask down. Crazy. Anyway, all right. 
So that's the mark. And you're going to know that the false health is going to be coming in connection with the Sunday law. So we're testing on the full gospel, the health, which is their false health, which is God's way of healing without drugs, and then the false worship versus God's true seven-day Sabbath. They're coming together. That's why I said this test must come through the churches in connection with the true medical missionary work. So you, can't, you will not be able to buy or sell unless you worship the beast or his image or receive his mark or his name or his number. The number is the easiest one. It's number 6666. That's the title that the papacy takes, which stands for Viscaris Feli Dei, which stands as the Vicar of Christ. The, that's the number of his name. That's the Latin name and title. The name of the beast is Catholicism. That's the religious name. They're Catholic. You see how all that come together? So all those people coming from the southern border, they're going to be able to buy or sell. In fact, they're coming to take your houses and land and cars and everything else. You know that, right? When the Sunday, oh, when the, when the Sunday law comes out, you won't be able to buy or sell at any price. And eventually, they're going to pass a law that if you don't comply, they're going to try to what? Kill you. Because they think you are a risk to society. And so they're going to try to kill you. And they're going to do that right here in Jacob's trouble. Once they pass the death decree, God's people who are living, and you've got to be one of the 140,000 to go past probation closes. Everyone else will be asleep and you will come up in what is called the special resurrection. You will come up with those who pierced them and those who died in the faith of the third angel's message keeping the Sabbath. Okay? So, but when they pass the death decree, they will be in what's called the time of trouble and all the plagues will be falling and they're going to be enraged. And they're going to say, well, the only people who's not suffering is those small little Adventists. So then they're going to pass a law specifically for Adventists that you must give up the seven-day Sabbath and keep Sunday within a period of time or the people can kill you and take all your possession. That's Jacob's trouble. Okay, we go into the country so that when the Sunday law come out, we can buy and sell before probation close. But once probation close, angels are going to have to feed us through the time of trouble. That's why the quotation says we are to make no temporal provisions for the time of trouble. That's the time between probation close and the second coming of Christ. Because if we have anything stored up, the servant of the Lord said it will be taken from us by wicked hands. There's going to be anarchy. People are going to be running all over the place. And so when probation close and when the death decree is passed, we will then leave our country homes and we will go deeper into the mountain. And all your nice furnishing, your bed and sheets and everything, the beast's going to get those. Okay? So that's why we should be modest in our outlay of means. If you got means now, you should be getting to get the gospel out because after a while, she says, house and land will be no use to the saints in the time of trouble. And if they didn't listen to God, it will come up before them like a what? Who read the quote? Um, overwhelming surprise. No, when, when they didn't lay their, their property on the altar, it said it will come up before them like a what? Oh. Um, who said it? Oh, I should have known. My wife said it. It will come up like a mountain and it will overwhelm them. They said, oh, we should have, could have, should have did it. It's too late then. Because the gospel is over. Okay. Let's go through this real quickly. All right. So you, you get the mark of the beast when you worship. Uh, what am I doing wrong here? Did my battery go dead? Yeah. Oh, okay. Go back. You get the mark of the beast when you worship the beast 
and his image or receive his mark. Now this mark in the context of Revelation 13 is not the mark of compliance, but it is forced Sunday keeping with a clause that says you must reject the seven day Sabbath. That's the B sign or mark versus God's seal. You got that? Or you must be Catholic. If you're Catholic, you can buy or sell. Or if you have the number of his name, which is the papacy, you can buy or sell. So you will see that the only people who are going to be buying and selling on the National Sunday Law is the papacy, Catholics, those who are keeping Sunday, and those who are in apostate Protestantism. That's everybody except Seventh-day Adventists. But we're going to be warning the world if any man worship the beast or his image or receive his mark or his, no, or his number. I think, in, I, I, if I recall in Revelation, it, they don't have the, I can't remember whether it's the name or the number. I think it's the name. The number is prominent because that's in Revelation 13, 18. So it's, it's the number, the mark. Now, here's the thing you have to see. You worship two things. What are the two things? The beast and his image. To buy and sell you need three things, but you can also buy and sell with five things. What do you need to buy and sell? That's right. You can buy and sell if you have the number, the name, and the mark. That's the mark of compliance. And because you worship the beast, you can buy and sell. And because you worship his image, you can buy and sell. But these are the economical items that you and I are going to need because we're definitely not the image of the beast. We're not a prostate Protestant. We're not the papacy. We don't have the name of the beast. We're not Catholic. And the number, we definitely don't have the papacy Latin title. So the only thing that we need to buy or sell is a compliance mark. And that mark is the passport. That's the jab. That's the test that's coming in connection with the National and Worldwide Sunday Law. And it's coming. All over the world, every time you look, they make some new rules. You can't do this unless you can show that you have been vaccinated. And the devil is stirring up hatred against us because we are exercising freedom of conscience. But I thank God we got all those 11 hour workers who don't even know none of this. Don't, they just know, hey, I give up my job, my house. They just give them everything. They are standing. And that encouraged me. I, got, I know all the knowledge. And, you know, we're kind of like shaking in our boots. Whew. God is bringing in reinforcements. I love it. Okay, let's go through this. And I stood upon the sea and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns upon his, and, 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 and uh, ten horns, and upon his horns were, there were ten crowns, and upon his head the name of blasphemy. Now this Revelation 13, 1 is definitely the leopard-like beast, which is the papacy, right? Hello, right? Whenever you see a beast and he has seven heads, what is that telling you? He used to have how many heads? He used to have 10. But in this description, instead of using horns, it's using the heads, but it still shows the 10 horns. So when you see the 10 horns and the heads, what are you seeing? You're seeing the phase of the papacy. If you were just to see the 10 horns, you will see the phase of pagan Rome. But once the seven comes up, whether they heads or horns, you are now in the papacy era, but the beast is still alive. 
You, you follow that understanding? Daniel 7, 11 says, I beheld till the what? Beast was slain. And that beast is pagan Rome, the turbo beast of, of Revelation 7. I beheld till the beast was slain. His body destroyed. So if you destroy his body, that means what? You can't find no place where he used to exist. But it says, but his body given to burning flames. So what does that tell you? He goes right down through time in the year 2021, right into hell's fire. And who does that? The beast. It don't say anything about the horn. But you know, because you know prophecy, that if you send the terrible beast, which represents pagan Rome, into hell's fire, you know the little horn came up among the ten, and he's on the beast. You follow that? So if the beast go into hell's fire, the little horn is going to hell's fire too. Because the little horn can't exist without the beast. This is basic Adventist understanding. Y'all, y'all know this, right? Okay, so here we go. I saw one of his heads as it was wounded to death, and the deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after him. When you look at those five heads, then he said one of his heads were wounded. Well, if you go to Revelation 17, this is where you get the story of the seven kings. Revelation 17, there are seven kings, five are fallen, one is, and the other is not yet come, and when he cometh, he is of the eighth and is of the seven. Y'all familiar with this, right? The five that are fallen are who? Babylon, let's count, Babylon, Medo Persia, Greece, pagan Rome, and papal Rome. <coughs> one is. Which one is? The papacy over there in the Vatican. Okay? If the Bible says he is, um, he is, yet is not. In other words, he was in power, but he's not in power now but he's still with us. The beast that was and is not and yet is. That's how the Bible says it. And so in case you got lost in Daniel and the rest of it, God sums it up in Revelation 7. And there are seven kings. He said seven, he meant 17. Huh? He said seven, he meant 17. Yeah, yeah, God sums up in Revelation 17. That's what I got up there. Okay, no, that's 13. Anyway, God sums it up. There are seven kings, five are fallen, Babylon, Medo Persia, Greece, Pagan Rome, Papal Rome. One is, and the other is not yet come, and this other is of the eighth and is of the seven. There's only seven periods. Probation closes here, but we still continue with events of the Lord. The eighth don't count. Seven is always completeness, but that's the way the Bible puts it. That this event here laps over into another period, okay? So, you will see that's Babylon, that's Medo Persia, that's Greece, that's pagan Rome. Remember, pagan Rome is the one that what? Crucified Jesus. That's why you have that cross there. And then after pagan Rome came papal Rome, okay? So, the Bible puts it like this. The beast that was, we're talking about this beast here, the beast that was went from 538 to 1798. Is not from 1798 to 2021. That means it's not in the power that it was as it used to be. Okay, that's what it's saying. Yet is. He's over there in the Vatican. Okay. But he shall ascend out of obscurity or the bottomless pit and go into hell's fire. That's what we read today. It says, referring to the devil, it says, even him who's coming is after working of Satan with all power and sign and lying one. Then shall that wicked be destroyed by the brightness of his coming. And this, uh, then shall that wicked be destroyed 
I forgot the, the quote. Anyway, by the brightness of his coming. Anyway, you, you can read it. I got it wrong. I don't want to say it wrong because I'm in Revelation. Here in, Woo. Here in Thessalonians. Oh, that's right. But, but I, I, was, I don't want to misquote it anyway. Okay, so what happened? We went off. Did I do that? Okay, so that's the first piece, Revelation 13. All nations will be forced by the United States Sunday and health law and mandate law to the disregard of the seven-day Sabbath to buy or sell on the penalty of death. You all know the text. I, I'm not really going through that that much. All nations are going to follow the United States. You know that, right? Okay. I'm going to be moving real quickly, so if you want to take pictures, take them real quick. In fact, if you got your flash drive, you can get the you know, you can get a copy of it. I always tell them, you go to church, bring your flash drive. You can always get a copy of whoever's speaking. The rise of the United States from 1700 into power to be the only superpower, but gives up its Republican and Protestant principles. Okay? So we see that, that the United States is going to exercise all the power of the first beast, which is the papacy before him, and is going to cause the whole earth and then which dwell therein to worship the papacy, okay? We spend a lot of time on the papacy, that the papacy is going to cause you to worship the papacy. That's not the prophecy. It is the image of the beast that's going to cause the world to worship the papacy. We got that clear, right? Okay. The image to the beast represents the form of apostate Protestantism, which will be developed when the Protestant churches shall seek the aid of the civil power for the enforcement of her dogma. That's in great controversy. Okay, good. And so the thing that's going to bring the Sunday law is the disasters. All you need is about two more of disasters like we saw in Kentucky and the rest of the nation, and the people are going to be calling the churches. And they're going to do the Satan's mandate. They're going to tell the kings of the earth that we're having this problem because of climate change and we're not keeping Sunday holy. So they're going to pass a law and they're going to mandate you that well, I don't care what your religious belief is, we've got to stop these terrible hurricanes. Just look at the devastation it's doing and you've got to conform. You have no choice. For the good of your neighbor and your family and everybody, you got to you got to comply and start worshiping God. When you don't take the jab, you're putting the whole nation at risk. You're the problem. If you haven't heard it yet, you're going to be the problem. And so you don't want to be around those. That's why you want to get in the woods someplace. You know, because all you want to do is minimize your suffering. You're not going to avoid it all, but the good Lord said, hey, pray your fight don't be in the winter time and get in the country so when this stuff goes down, you will avoid most of it, but not all of it. And I tell you, it takes a while to learn how to grow stuff and so forth and so forth. You, you know, my wife, she put a whole bunch of seeds in the ground and not one came up. <laughs> that, that counts. That counts. Yeah. Those few little leaves, we can't, we can't live on them for one year. <laughs> yeah. So, and it, take, it, it is daunting. It, it takes a while to become a good grower that you can eat. Because we won't be eating nothing from the Sunday law until the close of probation. You know? And so a lot of people are going to say, hey, I'm hungry. I'm going to go get, I'm get the job. I'm ready to eat. You know how we Christians do. The image of the beast represents the form of apostate Protestant, which is developed when the Protestant church, churches shall receive the aid of the civil power for the enforcement of their dogma. The image of the beast, we, we did that. The mark of the beast still remains to be defined. At the time, Ellen White worked wrote that she didn't know what they was going to use as the mark of compliance. Remember, you get the mark of the beast when you accept the mark, okay? Based of the context, the mark could be Sunday keeping or it can be the jab, which we call the passport. Go back. 
in, in, in the text, in the text of Matthew, Matthew, in the text of Revelation 13, 15, I think it is. I can't think. I've got to find out. It's referring to the health phase of it. He calls, oh, and he calls all to receive a mark that no man may buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. 13, yes, yeah, 16, I'm sorry. 13, 16. And he calls all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark. Okay, in their right hand or in their forehead that no man may buy or sell, save he, here's what you're going to need to buy or sell. You need the jab or the mark or the name of the beast, which is the Latin term for the title the papacy take or the, or the number of his name. That's the title of the title he take. But the name of the beast is Catholicism. You, all those people for the most part who are coming south of the border have the name of the beast in their forehead. That means they, they are what? Catholics. Catholics. You and I have the name of God in our forehead, and what's that called? Seven-day Seven Sabbath. That's the seal of God. So Ellen White, at the time, she was not shown what the mark was, but she did tell us that the test is coming in connection with the health part, okay? No buying or selling unless you have that mark of compliance. And we start to see that all over the country. You can't go to school, you can't do this, you can't do that unless you have this passport or this mark or this compliance ID. Truth can bear examination. Stay tuned, you will see it's going to go worldwide. You ain't going to be able to do anything unless you have the mark. The decree is to go forth that all who will not receive the mark of the beast shall neither buy nor sell. Finally, they shall be put to death. But the saints of God do not receive this mark. The prophet of Patmos beheld those, praise God, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, who had gotten the victory over the beast, over his image, over his mark, and over the number of his name, what were they doing? Standing on the sea of glass. And where's the sea of glass? In heaven. And what is at the end of the sea of glass? The new Jerusalem. And what's in the new Jerusalem? The what? The throne is in there, but what else is in there? The Garden of Eden. The Garden of Eden that's going to come back down. And where's it going to land? It's going to land right back where God first planted it, where it was. He's going to restore it right back to the very spot. If you read the destruction of Jerusalem, you'll see that word, the very spot, the very spot, the very spot. When Jesus went to heaven, where did he leave from? That very spot on the Garden of Eden. He went there. When Daniel prayed three times towards Jerusalem, where did he pray to? He was praying to the very spot. He was looking for the restoration of the Garden of Eden. When you know tomorrow's news, you pray correctly. You know where to pray toward. That God's going to plant, replant that Garden of Eden. I think that's my last slide right there. Okay. Uh, yeah, we did that one. Uh, that's it. That's it. Now, we know approximately, this is approximately, the Southern Law says the Sunday Law will be, anybody know the quote? Very what? Similar to the one that was passed by who? Artaxerxes with Mordecai and Esther. Now, their law was for one year. The law went out the first of the month, and they had to comply by the 12th of the month. So it's going to be very similar. And that fits, that fits right into the prophecy that you and I are going to have to be on our own for one year, approximately. And I think it's significant that God tells approximately the duration. We're not time-setting or anything like that. It says, 
that we can tell how long an event week will be, but the time frame is left up to the Lord. Amen? Okay, saints, I'd like to thank you for your patience. Hopefully, I've given you some tools to go home and study to see if it's so, because truth can bear examination, but you need to be getting ready. You need to ask the Lord what you should or should not do, where you should go. All you got to do, the Lord, he is reasonable. You can talk to the Lord. Just think, when, um, who put the fleece out? Gideon. Gideon. Just think. He set the rules. He said, okay, Lord, if you want me to go to battle, I'm going to put this fleece out here and... Tomorrow when I come, I want the fleece wet and the dry ground. Right? And that happened. The next day he said, okay, I want the ground wet and I want the fleece dry. And is that what happened? So God is reasonable. You have not because you ask not. Tell the Lord what you want. He's a big guy. He owned the cattle upon a thousand hills. He sure can give you one. Amen. Don't be afraid to ask the Lord. I tell you, he's a big God. If he can give you one cent, he can give you a million dollars if if it's to your good and to his name glory. Amen? Let's pray. Father God, we ask for your faith. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for tomorrow's news today that you're giving to us in prophecy. We thank you for this church who through all this pandemic we've been continually here to worship you. We thank you for the fellowship that we have here. We pray that it will increase. We pray that if we've been in the tribe of Dan, we will no longer be in the tribe of Dan. We all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We pray that if we're in in the tribe of Ephraim that we would love not the world, neither things are in the world, but we shall prepare to meet you you come. And Lord, we want to be able to say, lo, this is our God. We have waited for him, and he will save us. Now, according to your riches in heaven, give a blessing to all those who had the patience of saying, stay. You know what their issue is on the home front and wherever they may go. We ask that you would bless them and let them know that you're with them no matter what. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.